Uh, oh man, let me close my door because I'm hearing the echo from the other room. Stacy, I love your hair, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> I was about to say the same thing. It looks great. Oh, you're talking about me? Or obviously. <laughs> maybe Nate. Yeah. So um yeah, we're not live right now. That's what we're kind of waiting on, seeing what's going on with, with tech. Uh, however, we are recording this uh, because this is an official um, uh, board. Uh, we we want to make sure that, that that we follow all the open meetings stuff. So that's why we're just a couple minutes late. Uh, I apologize. But again, we're recording it and we're doing the best we can. So I think we, we should be OK. Um, I, however, am not a lawyer. All right, so uh, welcome back, everyone. Uh, thank you all for um, returning. I, I know for the last few months, uh, pretty much the idea we, we was folks are getting back to business and we wanted to um, space these out a little bit so that uh, we can still have people participate without it really impinging, I think, on that back to business or, or back to normal feeling that I think we felt more so this summer. Uh, so appreciate that, uh, folks. We're, we're, back on and, and focusing back on these issues. So you guys were emailed a copy of the minutes um, from our last meeting, which was back in May, and just uh, wanted to know if, if there's any discussion on those minutes. Seeing none with that, I'll make a motion to accept the minutes uh, as presented. Thumbs up. Any, any, any opposition to accepting the minutes? See none, the minutes are accepted as presented. Now with Mr. Bell, um, our uh, ambassador to national policy, uh, the man who understands the inner workings of the Americans uh, or the uh, Recovery Act and the CARES Act uh, is now going to tell us if there's anything new uh, with, with COVID um, relief updates or anything else we should be knowing. So Mr. Bell, the floor is yours. Good morning. Thank you, Mayor. And uh, my apologies uh, for any background noise. Uh, I'm in a uh, hotel over in uh, Manhattan, Kansas this morning. Um, and uh, good morning, everyone. So uh, very quickly, uh, we're now at a point uh, where COVID idle uh, payments have, you know, have obviously uh, started. A number of businesses are making those payments and uh, there are some that are having difficulty. Uh, so just wanted to share with this group for those that receive loans, COVID idle loans, uh, below 200,000, there is a hardship uh, payment uh, request that is uh, going to be rolled out here pretty quickly that will allow those payments uh, to be reduced. I think over a period of, uh, or I believe over a period of 24 months, payments would be reduced. Um, and um, uh, interest or I'm not exactly sure what the idea is if these are gonna be interest only payments, but I know that uh, the interest will continue to accrue you know, on those loans. Uh, what we're told is, um, and pretty firmly, is that there will not be loan forgiveness associated with COVID idle loans. So just wanted to uh, clarify that. And as soon as we have the information locally that we can disseminate, uh, we'll be sharing that with this group and sending it out, you know, by way of a uh, press release. For those that have received COVID uh, idle loans, also pay close attention to your email and, um, you know, looking for any communication from the SBA on this subject. So um, I'll stop there. And if uh, there are any questions or anything, uh, be happy to entertain those. Any questions for Mr. Bell about any, any of the stuff discussed or previous policy issues discussed. See none. Thank you, Mr. Bell. Appreciate right, that. Thank you. thank you, Mayor. So we're going to jump into our discussion on cold weather um, services that are available. We all know winter's coming. Um, we got a little taste of it this week. Uh, so uh, we want to uh, chat a little bit about what what um, opportunities are there for particular folks who, who are experiencing um, homelessness or, or are unhoused uh, and, and just try to get the information out there to, to best uh, ensure we're taking care of our neighbors. Uh, so with that first up uh, on my agenda, and, and I might just switch over to Nate if housing department staff isn't on. Uh, now the agenda is housing staff and then uh, Nate uh, with the hot team is going to come in. Um, 
in there, Is, Mr. Casey. Yes. Uh, I actually, this I reached out when we were not meaning to kind of get topics, and this was a topic that Stacy um, kind of came up with, and so maybe she could give some background, and then Steve Cooper is who I've been working with to kind of organize this meeting. So he might be able to give the overview from staff and then kind of open it up to them could be. Steve, okay, perfect then. And then we'll, we'll jump to Nate. Yeah, I wasn't sure uh, who from the housing department what was gonna be on. So uh, nope. Stacey, that's if you can go ahead and give us the intro. Up, so that's on me. No worries. Uh, so we'll recognize Stacy, and then we'll switch it to uh, Steve. Oh. I was just, uh, she had asked, Casey had asked for some input and I just said, we had some issues with um, people coming in and, um, you know, staff not really knowing what to do. Everybody's very nice, but, um, you know, sometimes people come in and they use the restroom or they, you know, want some water. We give them when it's, you know, hot in the summer, give them some water or we try to be, try to be, uh, you know, friendly and kind and, um, you know, but then other times it's like we've tried to be like, you know, paying customers only so you can use the restroom and stuff. But, you know, sometimes it just doesn't work in real life. Um, but then sometimes people come in and, and and could cause an issue or there could be safety issues or there could be, you know, it's like we always just tell the team to, you know, call 911 if there's an issue. But it's like, I don't know, just I really would like more. if there's training or just more kind of tips and things that we can do to, to be kind and to be caring, but also, you know, do the right thing and um, keep the staff and the customers safe. So that was just kind of, we haven't had any major issues, but that was just trying to get ahead of that a little bit. Absolutely. Uh, Steve, let's start off with you. Okay. I, uh, when uh, Casey presented this to me, we, um, we taught immediately. I thought of the, I've worked with the, Officer Schwedal on the homeless outreach team, uh, a brochure that uh, is fairly large and very extensive about all the resources available to the, the unhoused community. Um, I thought that what might work well is a small, uh, say like a palm card size or something that's or maybe rack card size, that may be as small as we can get it. They would have kind of the bare essentials uh, services would uh, have the uh, the hot team number as well as housing's number as and uh, resources for shelters, uh, maybe some other resources, neighborhood resource centers, anywhere where people can uh, get in out of the elements. So be it cold, hot, whatever. Um, so something about that size. I pulled in Officer Schwedal, uh, which was great. I mean, he's obviously the re the resource um housings included so um that's basically what i'm proposing um uh, i think having tips in there that would be great also i'm working on uh, possibly including library branches as well as another resource place where people could get in um but we're also open to ideas there is i know and and officer uh, should we all probably speak to this but i know we're still trying to secure uh winter housing or a winter shelter. So that's still in flux. So nothing's been created as of yet until that is solidified. But uh, once that is, I think we could put out some material, a, you know, this rack card or palm card for, business, for the business community. Excellent. Thank you. We're glad you're working on that. The, um, it, and we'll, we'll be happy to, well, once the, those are formalized, get, get those out because we do start getting a lot of calls uh, from, my office, folks reaching out, it, what, what is the best way to move forward as far as presenting resources for people who need them? Um, so uh, we tell people to call 211. I mean, call United Way, um, and then they can get them to the resources. I mean, sometimes that's all the card that you can put on there is call 211. Um, you know, I mean, we know what the resources are, but I mean, sometimes it's just better just to hand them that. And, and I do wonder, maybe I can reach out to um, United Way, uh, and especially when, when when Mr. Cooper and Officer S get more of the information down, can we partner with them? So when you do call 211, they have the most up-to-date uh, information, but that, that's a good one. Uh, 211 is kind of that go-to when it comes to United Way. All right, um, let's go with uh, um, Officer S. 
Okay, Officer Nate here. Uh, hey, Steve, real quick, did I send you a copy of our Palm card from last year that had, it was a real quick guide that had the list of uh, all the shelters and even had a map and a location of how to get there? Yeah, yeah, I've got that. So yeah, I thought that was that was really honestly the size I'd like to get it down to. I don't think we can do that, but, um, and that that seemed very patrol centric or, you know, to the officers, but yeah, good information. But yeah, about that size, I think, I'd like to, it may have to be like folded over, but something small that that's not going to be cumbersome for people to get and go through. So, yeah, yeah, I could, I, I could share the screen on that if you wanted, but yeah, if people want to see it, that's fine. Um, maybe while you're pulling that up, I, I will, that, that card obviously needs to be updated with some information. Um, I did speak with Latasha a few days ago. She is a director of uh, humankind. Uh, they are trying to enter. Uh, open up the winter shelter at the the normal location where I think it's 940 North Market in the basement of uh, the apartment complex for the women and across the street uh, at around 800 block, I forgot, 841 North Market for the uh, men's. Um, they're, they issue the running twos, they're running the staffing, they need about 30 staffing or so, they're short and they had like 30 applicants and then five people showed up for interviews. So uh, there, there could be a a delay in them opening and it's uh, due to staffing issues so i don't know if there's anything on the the city could do to try to i don't know boost advertisement to for people to apply but that's basically what they're struggling struggling with right now um but i'll leave that up to you guys but steve did you have that up did you want to share that palm card at all or i am still try, trying to get that up so okay i can move into what we so far, it's it's constantly moving, but we have a winter plan that we've been developing since August. If I want to, if that's okay, I can go over that. Um, yeah. So where it's it's kind of a four stage approach. Um, the first one is an in, internal education campaign. Um, we'll use donated funds that we I write grants um, that are not through city funds, and then they're donated dollars, and that's what we printed off those um, palm cards. But if we want to do those were just going to the homeless that we would interact with and then to the officers, but um, we can obviously, you could do more if we want to do that. Um, typically, the winter shelter will open November 1st through March 31st, but again, there could be a delay, of a couple, a delay uh, by a couple of weeks, okay. Um, humankind normally connects uh, intakes beginning around 6 o'clock and ending around 8 p.m., However, in the past, HOT has confirmed not only with Humankind, but also with the Indian Rescue Commission that we can, if you're an officer, you can take anyone there at any time, even if it's midnight, as long as they're not being disruptive and, and that type of thing. So we're also going to do um, educational email to all the officers again, just educating them about where the shelter's at and putting, making sure we put those palm cards and our resource guide. Uh, in their their boxes at the substation so that they have those flyers to distribute. Um, now, as far as hot operations, as far as what we're going to do during the periods when weather forecasts call for temperatures to fall abnormally below the daily average, hot will suspend normal daily operations and only focus its resources on educational outreach directed at locations typically overlooked, such as outlying areas of overpasses and bridges. Um, our efforts is a guide the unhoused toward utilizing the day shelter, which is open door, and the overnight um, emergency shelters, humankind, uh, Union Rescue Mission. And we're also going to continue to partner with community groups and receiving and distributing hats and gloves and socks and hygiene kits, which we are we get those all the time. We have storage bins at our office at the traffic office downtown, and we're constantly keeping our vehicles and our trucks uh, full of that type of things. We have emergency blankets. We have emergency um hand packs i mean to be honest there has been times when due to behavior people were exited from the shelter even in the cold uh just because of really extreme aggressive behavior um and then we were able to at least give them something to try to uh, make it through the night <clears throat> we're also wanting to do a community education campaign um, we'll draft a media release and submit it to wp information office to be released um the media did try to do an interview with us this other day because it got cold that we had to get permission so the logistically didn't work out but we now have permission to um, um, do that that media release and talk to the media about our our plan and what we're doing moving forward um we also want to partner with the local church net and networking so i'm getting ready to send out 
information to a lot of the churches, seeing if they would be willing to open up their doors um, during these times. Um, I have a pretty good connection with Family Promise that works with, I want to say, like 50 churches that already uh, help families that are homeless, but there might be some churches that be willing to do something uh, like open up their, uh, you know, a, another room for homeless to go into if it's if it's uh, really, really cold out. So we're still looking for those individuals in those churches that want to break out and and participate. So that's kind of a quick overview of our plan as far as a hot team. But obviously, it's a community wide issue and everyone needs to be involved. So let's open up to questions for Nate. I have a question. Uh, I've got one. Oh, oh sorry. So we're, gonna, we're go with Erica, then we'll go with Brooke. Okay, cool. Okay. So I live in Midtown Historic District off the of 13th and Broadway, and the homeless are our neighbors, which is totally fine. I love them all. I've nicknamed a few. Are those cards, Nate, that you guys are creating or maybe going to be downsizing? Are they available for like me to come get and maybe myself hand out? Because I see a lot of regulars in my area and I kind of keep watch for them and they don't know where to go. I had a new lady who arrived in the homeless community maybe last week and she is just a straw and doesn't know what to do. I called Humankind, but she has three chihuahuas. So I have to find a shelter, a woman shelter and one that takes dogs. I reached out to my friend who does fosters for dogs to see if that's a program they offer but she just was lost. She didn't know what to do. So I know that for me, with my experience with the homeless, it would be really helpful if I could say, hey, here's an information card. These are all the people and all the locations in this area that can help you besides just the Lord's Diner and what shelters provide shelter for women and what shelters provide for animals and what's available. Because I know humankind is packed right now. I called yesterday and they have no yep. beds available. Yep. Yeah. Um, so typically last year, we, again, like our, our hot team, everything we do besides our wages is done through donations from the community, not through tax dollars. So I write grants and I get money. So I have kind of a small little pool. Um, I had enough money to just print off the cards for our hot team and then for the officers and a community wide. I don't know if I have the funds to do that. What I could do is currently what you, if you go on the WPD website and go to um, field services and then find our hot team you'll see our web page and in the middle of it there's a pdf on the hot brochure you can pull that up and it's actually a printable version of all the resources and all the um, shelters and their numbers and their locations um, it's possible i could work with steve we could design a card and i can also upload that onto our website so people can print the card off themselves and, and print as many as they want um, so I don't, that's just some ideas throwing that out there that we Oh, can, that's perfect. I'll print off a bunch and just hand them out to everyone that I see that I know isn't going to, they're not prepared for it is what I'm seeing. And we have a park in on Emporia where I live and we do have a tent and it doesn't bother any of the neighbors. They're, they're not upsetting anybody. We're right next to, I think it's the children's home maybe where it was yeah, the old Ron Crossroads. Ronald house. Crossroads, yeah. Crossroads, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's just. We want, I want to be able to provide them something so they know where to go because they're lost, obviously. Yeah. That's why they're that tent's lost. actually, we believe it's abandoned. There was, we found a guy, he was sleeping in it overnight and he was getting on a bus to leave town and he said it had been there empty and he was just using it. The orange it was, one? Yeah, it was a, a few weeks ago, I think it was, there was four juveniles that were going to get on a bus to get go to California to live with friends. They were staying at Crossroads. Mm -hmm. So we've already posted it. We have to give. Uh, warning in 72 hours yeah just in case and that's uh, just federal law and then um, parks department will come in and and yeah. break it down but i think it's abandoned is it okay well that makes sense hey. i haven't seen anybody <laughs> okay thank you just a follow-up to Eric's question and then brooke i'm going to get right to you um so nate i, I i'm writing down a list of what what i think are needs uh and maybe steve and can, can help update that palm card uh the I, if I don't want to take your grant money, I'm wondering, can I shuffle some funds uh, around here to get uh, uh, some palm cards that we could pass out to or that local businesses could utilize? Uh, and maybe, so I love that design uh, as we move forward. And then maybe also reach out to, I'll reach out to um, United Way. Uh, so to see, hey, can you guys give this information if we direct people called 211? But I don't want to 
uh, forget this point, I, I think Erica has, has a really good point where more folks uh, besides just Nate and his crew going out, passing these out, uh, um, it'd be beneficial if we had them uh, for other people as well. And I think I can, I, I can find some resources for that. So just wanna throw it on your guys' plate. Uh, uh, once that, if we could get a card designed um, and, and Steve, maybe offline, I could show you the, um, because punk cards is what we do in politics too. Like, so I can kind of show you the, the uh, I guess the 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 sizes that uh, we that are pretty cost effective, and maybe we can get it to fit a particular palm card size that we can get printed. Let me look into that. Um, uh, Burke, the floor is yours. Uh, well, I appreciate this discussion, um, and I think training and education is something that I mean, it's something that. Uh, local business owners that we've all been kind of asking for for a while and I know that the resources have been there it's just kind of figuring out how to connect everyone to those resources so I definitely appreciate this discussion obviously this is a huge um, issue that's super it's multifaceted and there's so many different directions I think that one thing that we all need to be kind of pushing for is some progress with the campus um, and um that's something that's kind of it feels like has stalled um but it seems to me as someone who um spends most of their time in old town that there is a shortage of resources and a shortage of places to go um since nasker park has renovated um it has displaced a lot of people um and there doesn't seem to be an answer of where they can really go. Another issue that I'm seeing um, that we've had um, some deeply um, personal connections to are the inmate drop-offs that occur. And I don't know if that's something that um, the police department is developing a plan for, um, especially in the winter time, because that seems to be when this can be most problematic is just dropping people off from outlying correctional facilities in the city and they don't know where to go. Um, and they're gonna find drugs and um, uh, be aggressive. So um, I don't know if that's something that, um, that you guys can speak to in terms of the drop-offs. That's something that um, is really concerning to me. Um, but I have seen in Old Town in the last six months, um, at, it's something that we've talked about at the Old Town Association meetings too, a definite uptick um, in homelessness or unhoused activity in our district. Yeah, I'd like to comment a little bit on some stuff. Uh, as far as Nascar Park goes, um, they actually increased the size of Nascar Park by 3,000 feet and then increased uh, seating for homeless by 200. Um, so we weren't necessarily pushing anyone out. And in regards to my experience, you'd only have around maybe a 10 or a dozen homeless per day hanging out there anyways. And it's uh, when it was original uh, Nascar Park. And uh, we actually have right down the street within two blocks, it's called an uh, open door, which is a day shelter. And they, as far as I know, they've never turned anyone away for being too full. They have air conditioning, they have heating, they feed them, they have resources there, they have, you know, restrooms showers, laundry. And so it's it's not that because of we renovated and made Nafsker Park bigger and more inviting for people that it they don't do well, I think development. Home. Yeah, no, I don't think it's I'm not trying to blame. I think development in general can do that. It's, but I don't know, you know, I didn't mean to point that as a big issue. Um I think in general Old Town has always had a homelessness problem. So um, and one place that I see, sorry to interrupt you and I'll let you continue, but I, it did just spark in my, I'm seeing a lot of issues on that bridge, on the um, the, the the Douglas Street Bridge to Nasker, to Old Town. Um, I mean, every night people are sleeping there. Yeah. And in regards to the uh, KDOC dumping people off, um, as far as what I know, we have the PDI has had meetings. I wasn't at them with KDOC a while ago. It was probably about a year ago, just trying to discuss this because we did see a trend of people getting pulled out and then getting bust to Wichita from, from various uh, correction facilities. 
And out of those meetings, the information we got is the reason why they were bringing them to Wichita is because Wichita has the most resources for someone who's, you know, exiting from the correction facility and they have nowhere to go. Um, from what I've been told, they don't just drop them off in Old Town and say, there you go. They actually drive them to the Union Rescue Mission um, and get them connected with case managers and people there who, you know, maybe give them our resource guide to um, the lay of the land and that type of thing. And then that they bust them in the mornings, I think we want to say like 6 a.m. or so, uh, down to the day shelter. And then now they're picking them up at 3 p.m. and then bringing them back to the Union Rescue Mission so they can get warm and um, get food and everything like that. We also um, we also uh, worked with our transit authority, uh, MTA, and they are actually in the event that they can't bus anyone out because the bus breaks down or cold weather, um, which the Wichita's transit authority is going to come in and, and assist and pick up that slack. And so that's something we're working with them on, and we got a plan for that as well. Further questions for Nate? I know. I know when you came and talked to me, how are you doing? Um, that we were talking about, you know, the city passing the ordinance where, you know, you couldn't sleep on the sidewalk anymore. Um, you know, I mean, is that, I mean, are we going to try to do something else with that about not being able, I mean, because I know they were displaced. You can't be on the sidewalk sleeping. So now you have to be in the grass or, you know, unfortunately it's pushed people back into parking lots. Um, is there something else that we can suggest, tell them where to go outside of business parking lots? Again, I'm for the campus. I agree with Brooke on that one. Well, we didn't pass an ordinance to or sleep in. Sleep in is a self-sustaining activity, which is protected by a federal law, but you can't block a sidewalk. And that's been in effect for decades, even before I was even a police officer. Um, uh, so, but again, it comes back to where you're asking your question is where can they go? Um, the Union Rescue Mission has never turned anyone away for being too full. Um, we're probably more likely going to have a winter shelter. It's going to open up. Uh, they never turned anyone for, away for being too full. In fact, I talked to Doug Nolte and Joe Shorter at the Union Rescue Mission. I said, in the event that the winter shelter couldn't open up, could the Union Rescue Mission um, take in everybody? And they said, yes. And the previous director, Danny Bender, also said the same thing they would have to uh, open up the cafeteria, lay mats on the ground, but they could do it in theory. Uh, the tricky part is that you have to, if you go over a certain number um, that goes over your fire code, then you have to have what's called a fire watch. And they've met with the fire department and they've already said, as long as you have someone that does a fire watch, you can go beyond the number of uh, bodies allocated for your facility. And so they're already prepared to do that. So um, that's the answer to your question during the day. During the day from you know 8 a.m. to 4 p.m., uh, open door, the day shelter. And then outside of that, Union Rescue Mission, Humankind, the winter shelter. And that's where that palm card, I think, is going to help out businesses. Um, you know, people feel like they want to help the homeless. We recommend, you know, not giving money. Uh, we've seen the studies where that typically goes towards their addictions. Uh, but you want to do something to help. And I think that palm card gives someone something to do or gives them a feeling that I'm helping them and that person knows where to go. I'm, I remember on Super Bowl Sunday, our, I got a call from a homeless at home on our homeless outreach phone. It was a guy who was new to Wichita and he legit wanted shelter. He didn't know where to go. And I'm sitting there not working, but I was talking him through, walking him all the way to the winter shelter and he found it. Um, so having people in the community out there to be able to hand those cards out with a little map, you know, that me and Steve will probably design together and that that'd be probably be priceless and it could be a really good step. Um, I like the map idea because I think our our probably our number one question we get is can I use your phone? Um, and we don't have a phone, so it's an easy answer, but then we just send them away. Is there somewhere that people can go to use? And by the time they get we're at Douglas and Hydraulic, by the time they get to us, they're a little far unless they're able to take the bus or Q line, or sometimes they're not, you know, in the right mind to be walking too far probably at that at that moment um so i was going to ask about resources for for phones or how to you know instead of just handing if yeah we could hand them something with a lot of phone numbers on it but how to help that particular situation that's probably our most frequently asked question so from what i know and i and we get calls all the time from quit trips from our homeless population 
on our hot phone. Um, so most of the quit trips, they allow people to have, they have a phone in the back somewhere that they allow people to call from. And then also open door has a, a phone that we have we, homeless calls from open door all the time. And that's downtown at second Topeka and then also the quit trips. And that's pretty much what we tell homeless when they kind of say, well, I don't have a phone. So. Let's bring back pay phones. <laughs> Free pay phones. Oh, nostalgia. Um, what, what else do we have for Nate? Nate, I got down kind of a, a wish list and I want to know if we, we should add anything to it. Um, 30 new people for humankind, that, that's really good information. I think that maybe if we reach out, there might be a play when it comes to uh, students who, who are working in, in social science degrees, maybe you know, there, there could be an opportunity to uh, align with, with some of the colleges to see if there are folks there who are interested in doing this, not just for, uh, uh, for pay, but also that they'll probably get some credit for it, some academic credit. So uh, uh, I, I really appreciate you bringing that out as, as an issue because maybe we're going to attack from a different angle. Um, also, I got the uh, need resource for palm cards. Um, so I, I'm going to check that out on my end. I, I'm, so a couple thousand bucks or a few thousand bucks goes a long way when it comes to, I think, printing out some of these. Um, and, you know, they might let me talk to the manager about that. Like, you know, maybe we'll, we'll cut our snack budget again at the city. <laughs> like we, we have a snack budget. Let's go ahead and ship that over to to actually be helpful. Um, so, uh, you know, let, let me check that out. Um, and and then also more, is what I was going to say, I made them really affordable by not adding color that cut the price down dramatically. And so I was able to print a lot more by doing that. Yeah, we and, and I, I'd appreciate it if possible getting two different uh, maybe one that's black and white and one that's full color. Uh, what I've learned just through my experience uh, um, doing campaign stuff is it, it, it turns out to the technology of the printer. Uh, they used to do spot coloring, uh, but there are some uh, good union firms out there uh, that uh, are incredibly cheap because they're pretty much a national print house or even the local one here is, is, is really pretty affordable. Um, but with some of the new technology, it doesn't matter if there's color or, or not. So let's, but let's get both so I get a for both of them, because um, I, I think that would be great. Um, also, one of the things I've learned, and I would love as we talk about resources, uh, availability of resources, one of the things I, I learned at a policy conference was it's not about an app, uh, it's more about maybe a mobile friendly website, uh, that there are a lot of folks who are experiencing homelessness and they might have um, you know, a very low end um, uh, smartphone. Uh, and uh, could we get, I guess, maybe some of this information uh, on a really easy, and maybe I can talk with comms and get a, a simple URL uh, that easy to remember um, that uh, I could be on a palm card and people can go and click around and, and get some of the resources. Um, that would be, that would be, it turns out the firefighters took wichitahot.com. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I thought, you know, Wichita hot team and then like look over that. That's a, Firefighters have that. And I'm afraid to look at the hashtag, to be honest. <laughs> but um, so <laughs> Miles gets it. So anyways, the uh, as we as we move forward, I'm wondering if if there's a play to make a very simple mobile browser friendly website with some of these, this information on it as well. Uh, so that will be some something that uh, uh, let me talk with comms about and maybe Steve and you can uh can see what type of information should be on that. Uh, you mentioned there is a website, so maybe we can just URL to that if it's already simplified to, to that with a um, with a URL that uh, or, or website name that's easy to, to remember. Um, and uh, that that's what I got. I, so far as the takeaways on my end to look into, is there anything else, Nate or, or Steve, that might be on a wish list that you know would it be too heavy of a lift, but Something we can get turned around pretty quick. Um, I was just going to tell you, you said simple URL. Wichita State already made this. Um, it's called Resource Guide. So, I mean, that's that why we have these meetings. Thank you. Like, let me. Can you can you shoot us the link to that? <laughs> um, because again, like the uh, we don't want to duplicate uh, uh, duplicate I, I guess um, uh, efforts, and maybe we can check that out and see how. Update is, is there anything else we want to add to that uh, idea? I think it, it would be good move I forward. I just added it to the chat. Beautiful. Thank you. All right. Um, other uh, updates for or other 
information from Nate or from Steve on the, this? See none. I don't see Councilmember Ballard on. She's floating around here. Um, so I'm uh, not sure uh, if she wanted to give an update on the cold weather task force meetings, um, but that's also last year and the year before, of course, we, we know we, we've got some unprecedented cold weather and we have folks who, um, who uh, uh, are on the housed. Uh, so we wanted to set up a bit of a task force to, uh, to, to address the issue a bit more concise. Uh, Councilmember Ballard has an extensive background working with folks who are uh, unhoused and was going to give us an update on that. But if she's not on, she probably got pulled into something else so we can continue that discussion um, at a later date. Uh, just to, and just want to also throw out there, we, in our last budget meeting, we actually did uh, hire or, or put funds to, to hire some social workers uh, to integrate within our police department to particularly for mental health uh, calls uh, for stuff that, and we do know that the statistics, you know, very sadly show that a majority of folks who are chronically unhoused also suffer from either a diagnosed or undiagnosed mental health condition. Uh, so we're hoping to uh, be, be more purposeful when it comes to um, delivering services uh, in the future by having folks who, who are trained uh, uh, to provide resources and so on. So just want to throw that out there that hopefully this time next year, um, we'll, we'll, Nate will have more of what he needs, but also we'll have more, um, you know, more folks who, who, are, who are out there uh, uh, doing things the right way. All right, so I got a hand up. Um, floor is yours. Hi, Mr. Mayor. Uh, my name is Shelly Hopped. I work in the housing department for the city. And I just wanted to kind of address a few concerns that people mentioned regarding like the winter shelter, um, the, the animals and things like that. I did wanna let everyone know that the housing department issued an RFP um, for $200,000 and the due date for that, the original RFP was on um, September the 23rd. We only had one applicant apply and that was actually not even a viable application. So we did go out for additional comment from providers um, and we've since modified that. We do have um, an RFP out again. We are having a pre-proposers conference on Monday and the due date for that I believe is um, ne uh, next Friday, I believe. So in concern, um, in relation to some of the concerns that have been addressed, we understand that for persons that are homeless let me back up. Typically, most shelters require individuals to leave at a certain point of the day. Um, they usually have to leave the shelter in the morning and then they can come back and stay at night. Recognizing that, one of the requirements that we have made for this RFP is that the shelter be open 24 seven. Um, that way, during the day, persons can maybe um, look for jobs, uh, look for housing, various things like that. So that has been one of the changes that we've made. Um, additionally, we have asked the shelter to be able to address how they could potentially serve women, couples, men, persons with families, and those individuals that may have animals. Because typically right now, um, if an individual has an animal, they cannot stay at the shelter. So these are things that our department has clearly identified as being concerned and we have incorporated that into the new RFP. As a result of those changes, uh, the value for that RFP has also increased. So hopefully that provides a little bit of clarity as to what the city's housing department is doing. I attached your little announcement. And I appreciate you. Uh, um... Jumping in, I just checked my text and, and I got a message that, that we had housing staff on and, and I'm glad I didn't miss that. So thank you. Um, all right, so uh, we'll continue with updates on, on, on this issue as we, we move forward. Uh, let me go back and see what I can grab as far as these uh, needs. And then we will reach out with not just the folks on this uh, call, but, but hopefully, um, reach out to figure out who else can we pass these, these resources, these cards to, uh, to, to ensure that they get to the, the people who need them. So 
I, I mean, like Stacy's on the call, her business uh, has folks coming in, um, but her, her neighbor's business might not be on this call and might be experiencing the same thing. So uh, let's, let me take a look into what we can do to get more of these and then maybe we can develop some type of um, uh, method to, to get these out. Like do we have an step. ETA on like a timeline or when we'll have the cards or when we hope to get them out? It sounds like a lot of the information is there, it just might be designing it. So I, I, Steve, what, what do you think? It, it's not gonna take very long to actually put something together. Um, again, I think we would definitely need to get some of these things uh, solidified as far as what uh, uh, Shelly was talking about and what uh, Nate's been talking about as far as all the resources um, the winter shelter. But once that's done, I think it's, it'll come together pretty quick. And I think if we can, again, using a lot of the information that's already on the hot brochure that looks like Nate put out on the chat too. Um, and I put that palm card, I just sent that too. Uh, I, I, I don't think it's going to take too long. So, I mean, I'm thinking if we can, uh, we're talking a matter of weeks. Hopefully, we'll do it as fast as we can, but yeah, I think I think we do need to wait for some of those resources to be solidified. And I, I think I just made also made a note that yeah, it'd be kind of good. And we don't have this on the hot brochure, but something about places that will take animals. So, should we, is, or yeah. can I print off the ones from the WPD website, or is those not up to date? I think that yeah, not, Nate would have to say, but I I believe those are current. I those know we current. updated uh, things. I think my latest one that I updated was in July, so that's that's fairly current. Okay. Yeah, I, mean, it's I know it's going to be 85 this weekend. Yeah. Next week it's going to yeah. be cold. And you all, all um, even if we're not going to have a meeting, you know, I don't think we're going to meet monthly. But as soon as I get information and updates, I'll keep using our email thread to keep you guys updated, and then hopefully send a draft version to this group to just make sure before we run to print, we didn't forget something or some new issue didn't come up or something like that. Cause I would like everyone to be actively involved to make sure that this is focused on something that community members can hand out that's helpful to them. Cause I think the stuff that hot team needs to tell people is slightly different is what I'm hearing from you all today. So, um, and if anybody has more ideas, please email me over the next couple of weeks because I can get those passed along to Steve as well. Yeah, thank you for doing that because a few years ago, they actually, we printed off some uh, cards to hand out and then Humankind changed it up and they moved the location of the female shelter to somewhere else. And so we had to like write on all of them and change. So it, yeah, if we can send that draft out, I can get it off to Latasha, Humankind, just to confirm everything before we print. That, that's, and I think coming back to... Uh... Uh, what the mayor talked about. I mean, I think or others, as far as if we have an updated, I saw the WSU site, that that looks good. Um, uh, Nate, I don't know if, and uh, hadn't thought about that, about taking the brochure we've done and actually having a web page for that too. Basically same information, It'd be pretty easy to do. And uh, mayor, like you talked about, we could have a vanity, what we call a vanity URL. It's just something easy, quick to remember that they could go to uh, on their phone, uh, if they have a phone, the problem yeah, that that's the problem with printed materials is they become outdated and it's expensive to update. And that's the great thing about a web page is it's very easy to do it. So um, and immediate. So uh, yeah, if we can kind of we could double that up at the same place. I mean, really, honestly, have a, a vanity URL on the cards that would take them to the more extensive web page. And maybe that's WSU site. Maybe that's the 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 hot teams uh, site, but uh, or page. Is there but. someone in town that's still doing like free phones? I know there was a gentleman on Broadway that had like a little tent, and he was doing it for a bit. But is there? Because back to like Stacy's question, if they don't have a phone, and we don't have the like easy access to a phone, is there somewhere where they can go apply for a free phone? So, yes, they can get those. Oh. Um, you got to have a, a card to be able to get your government phone. So, but you can get it every three months, I believe. I it's think the card. has probably more on that one, but yeah, I think it's every three months. Yeah, you have to be receiving uh, government benefits of some type, whether it's SSD, IDI, or if you get food stamps and that gets you qualified for the phone. 
unfortunately um, not everyone would qualify yeah to get on, so it's not just like everybody can get a free phone there was a time when you could do that but currently not the case yeah i know my homeless people they would definitely they're not in government they're not in government well, Nate also mentioned how Quick Trip allows people to use the phone too. And maybe that's if we get their permission, maybe that's something we put on the card as far as resources for uh, free phone use or places that, that will let people use their phones. Are we going to talk jumpstart into it since they took over that Quick Trip on Murdoch and Broadway? Mayor? I, I, <laughs> so, I, so to be honest, I, I, I haven't had a chance, an opportunity to interact with the uh, jumpstart. I did uh, uh, or was made aware that they they shot out an email to Councilmember Ballard uh, during the summer and, and talked about donating water uh, mm -hmm. to folks who, who who might need water. Um, they seem like they 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 understand uh, that that folks depend on that that spot for particular yeah. services, and they, they see they didn't seem aggressive. I, no, I guess they're great. Being, yeah, being part of the solution. Um, I, I do also just want to point out, and this might not be a popular thing to say, but uh, while we appreciate Quick Trip and Jumpstart and so on, the reality is like I, I think we got to be going above and beyond as well. And so I, I'm not knocking what they've done, but just one of the things that struck me when Quick Trip moved was the uh, was the uh, uh, the panic in the community about the services they provide for folks who are unhoused. And it, it struck me as like, like, like we we should not depend on a for profit business uh, to to be providing the, these needed services. Like we, this is a role where I think uh, uh, government can step in uh, because they, they have to make corporate decisions. Uh, and you know, there's a difference between I think um, be, being uh, uh, focused on services and, and focused on the bottom line. And I'm not knocking them like they pay taxes, right? But the reason why they pay taxes is so that uh, other programs can, can come and help out with, with social services. Uh, that's part of our role. So I, I, I think it's good. We should reach out to them. I think that Maggie, uh, Cosmo Ballard uh, has, let me get caught up with her uh, on that. Uh, but also as we move forward, I'm hoping we can get away from, I guess, relying on uh, some of these gas stations and, and these really good-minded, good-hearted businesses, uh, just because the economy is, is so unpredictable, we're not sure what you know what, what their next move is. So I don't want to be overdependent, but just throwing that out there. All right. So further, um, all right. I think this is really useful conversation. I got some takeaways that I can, some action steps for me to take away. Um, further discussion on this for. Nate or, or Steve, just no further questions. Really appreciate you guys for being on. Thanks for taking a, a moment. Um, Nate, I'm not sure where you are, but uh, it looks beautiful. Uh, the <laughs> um, Wonderful. Uh, so the next meeting uh, we have is set up for December 16th. Um, if we'll, we'll contact you email in case there's anything coming up. I, I know December is a tough month. I think we wanted to do uh, and we can still communicate through email as far as updates when it comes to, you know, when these things are printed and, and when we can utilize them. Uh, but, um, oh, and they just put in safe links phone uh, in, in a chat. So we'll communicate between now and then uh, to, uh, we'll do an update on this topic, of course, but see if there's other topics that, that we need to address uh, moving forward. Uh, is there any further discussion at this time? If not, we, we might actually get you guys out on time. All right, cool. All right, well, there's no further discussion. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Is there I'll a second? Second, second by Amber. Uh, all in favor of said motion. Uh, oh, so someone just said or we're not meeting in November. Uh, at this time, no, I thought we were, I think we, we talked about meeting um, every other month. Uh, so. Good question. Um, I have it down as December 16th, but if that changes, what will be an email uh, conversation, of course. So uh, I want these meetings to be purposeful, useful, but not also a burden. Uh, so um, I know that folks get back to a normalcy and I, I just wanna make sure that um, we're, we're respectful of that. All right, so there's been a motion and a second to adjourn. All in favor, please give me a thumbs up. All opposed, thumbs down. <laughs> Brooke gives an eye. Um, all right, so uh, motion passes. We're adjourned. Uh, thanks, thanks everyone for uh, spending time with us today. And again, thank you to 
uh, Stephen Aid and, and also um, our, our housing staff, uh, Miss uh, Hop. I, I think so. It's been as probably wrong, and I apologize if I am. Uh, You're great. Take care, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you.